Okay, so now I've done one side. And you can see how, of course, this piece was big enough to cover the number two area. It was placed right side down, so the bulk of the fabric is opposite the area I'm trying to cover. Then I turned it over and sewed on that whole line. <clears throat> Trimmed the extra out of the seam, and then it will fold back and cover area two. Notice how all the little raw edges of both of those leaf sides are caught in the seam. Then you've got a neat little leaf with a vein going right down the middle that's in the construction of the quilt. So here I've got the other side ready to place my other piece of fabric. So I'll cut another piece of fabric this big, place it right side down so that the bulk of the fabric's opposite the area I'm going to cover. And I'm going to turn it over and sew that whole seam. Then I'm going to do the same thing on for the next two leaves, but once these new areas are pressed and folded back against the areas they're covering, then I'm going to machine baste where the next set of leaves come in to meet that seam. Then I'll turn it over. That will transfer the line to this side. And I will then place those stacked two together so that they're see how this is marked they'll be facing this way not on this side they'll be over here and then I'll foundation piece four and five and then I'll have my four leaves ready to do the next step and we'll show you that next now with all of this foundation piece done I'm going to hold this up to the window and I'm going to trace the stem lines so that they are on the fabric side of the unit. Then I remove the paper from the back and I'm going to add these stems. And this is a really fun concept. This is also in a lot of my other quilts, the Welcome Quilt, the Mother's uh, Flower Wreath, it's in the duck uh, framed quilt in my first book. It's in several and it's um, really pretty easy. Usually I will cut the strip um, on the bias if I'm making a turn um, but how these stems are straight and so I don't need to do that. They, they, can, they don't have to be on the bias which conserves fabric. It's a one and a half inch strip. I fold it in half, wrong sides together and press it. Now these I've done, but let me show you on this one what I've done. There's a trace line here for my stem. Might be hard to see, but it's there. Then I'm going to place the raw edges a quarter of an inch past that drawn line. And with the side of my pressure, presser foot so that it's exact, I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch right down that line. So the actual stitching should be on the line since I placed it a quarter of an inch past. And that's what I've done on these two. So these have been stitched. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that over and I can press it again if I, if I want it really tight. And I'm going to take single thread and I'm just going to blind stitch that little unit here and the, you know make sure the leaf will still open. It's a little tight but it should still open. Now to blind stitch, and I show this on some of my other videos, you're going to come up from the back and catch the little edge. This is also an applique stitch. The reason it's blind is you want a little bit of thread showing on the top as you can. So where I've come up here, I'm going to go down exactly across from where I came up. Then I'm going to move forward for a really nice tight seam. You only, you know, you don't go very far. And I just caught the very edge of that fold. Now there's just a tiny stitch showing. Do the same thing and I progress, move forward underneath the fabric so it does, that part doesn't show. Those stitches will be long on the back. Now I'm going to do that all the way up and that is how I can get just an exact 
little stem that's that's exact little width right there and it will look beautiful and then these will press be pressed open like that I've got a lot of dimension a lot of neat looking things that will make your quilt look advanced but it's really not hard to get these neat straight little stems of course now if I had cut on the bias and I would have a shape that I need to go around I would hold that right on the shape and because it's bias it will stretch and because it's bias it will fold back over and make some nice turns for you and still look just absolutely fabulous so that's how this unit now is is done once I put those stems on and they're secure and they're blind stitched now we'll show you the pot section of this quilt now we're going to show you how to make the pot with the dimensional rim again we've photocopied our pot and we're going to foundation piece one two three one being the pot two and three being the background now there's this line here that we're going to try to foundation for and make it dimensional now we can fold it on that four so we know where it is that might be helpful right there now we're going to take a piece of rim that's double the width more than double the width this way of the pot and plenty long to cover all of that number four and we're going to layer it with batting and we're going to put the middle of that right on that fold now we're going to turn it over and we're going to foundation piece on that line and then when it's foundation pieced it will come up we do, we're not going to trim the extra out of the seam that's going to give us our dimensional rim then we'll foundation piece let's see one two three four it would be five and six in background and then seven is the uh, ground whatever color you're going to have the, be the ground and I cut it on the outside dashed line and that one's ready to put into our quilt 